Warning, there are Final Fantasy 7 spoilers in this video. Be warned. Hey guys, what is good? Narciss here from RLP Gaming Projects, and guys, I am here with a controversial thought. Who is the true villain in Final Fantasy 7? Sephiroth has to be the most popular villain in the Final Fantasy franchise, and to be honest, he is for good reason. I mean, the guy wields the longest sword in history like it's nothing. He is epic on so many proportions and quite self-centered like most villains. But what I'm coming to you today about is whether he is, in fact, the true villain of Final Fantasy VII. Now, before you head down to the comments section, hear me out. I just recently played through Final Fantasy VII on the PS4, I platinumed the game meaning I completed all the achievements, and I took some notes I would like you guys to hear. I mean, there are a lot of bad guys in Final Fantasy VII. You have Don Corneo, the Turks, Dine, and so on and so on. But let's look at the big three in the game and they are the Shinra, Genova, and Sephiroth. Now let's start with the oldest one and that is Genova. Genova is an ancient alien that came to Gaia 2,000 years prior to the story. This was the time when the Cetra were thriving. Genova took the form of the Cetra as a way to get close to them and started to spread a disease that made them go crazy and nearly wiped them all out. Genova posed such a threat that the planet felt threatened enough that it needed to protect itself from her, or it, or just whatever Genova is, a boy or a girl. Okay, now let's reflect on what I just said here. Genova is so powerful and evil that she nearly wiped out a whole race of people and the planet created super powerful weapons to try and stop her? This alien is some bad stuff. Genova was able to be contained inside the northern crater by the remaining Cetra that survived. Not killed, just sealed there. Then, 2000 years later, or 30 years prior to Final Fantasy VII, a man named Professor Gast found Genova and she was released from her northern crater prison. Now, after being freed by Professor Gast, she was always in the possession of a Shinra. So she wasn't what you would say let loose, but still freed from the northern crater. Many lives were affected by this and not in a good way. Let's fast forward to the events of Nibelheim before it was originally burned down. Cloud, Zack, Sephiroth, and one other Shinra soldier are sent to investigate a malfunction at the Nibelheim reactor. While they are in the reactor, they see many human experiments, and at the top of it all is a chamber labeled Genova. Sephiroth sees this, knowing Genova is his mother's name, but he has never met her. He puts two and two together and supposedly loses his mind. Now, we know that Sephiroth is a child of the scientist couple Lucretia and Hojo. They injected Lucretia's womb with Genova cells and Sephiroth is the byproduct from that. Real quick, let's fast forward to when Cloud and the gang first travels to Nibelheim in the game. Many reunion members are gathered here. They all say that Sephiroth is calling to them to go to Genova's reunion, or really just to the reunion. All of these members are pulled to this reunion due to the Genova cells in them, and the whispers of Sephiroth calling to them. The common theme between all these things is Genova. Who's to say that Sephiroth went crazy at the reactor after finding out who his mother is supposedly? Maybe coming into close contact with Genova and having the Genova cells in him caused a reaction and she caused Sephiroth to lose his mind just like she did to the Cetra. She fed false information to Sephiroth or could have and that's why he went back for her after he burned Nibelheim. Sephiroth even states that he was given orders to take back the planet in the basement of the Shinra mansion. Throughout the events that unfolded on disc 1 and the beginning of disc 2 had, that had Sephiroth in them, they were all Genova disguised as Sephiroth. She did this to lure Cloud and his friends to where she needed them. Genova had it all planned out and she used Sephiroth as a pawn piece in it all. The reunion members being called? That could have easily been Genova since she was disguised as Sephiroth this whole time. Who killed Eris? Genova did in the form of Sephiroth and we know this because Sephiroth is trapped up at the northern crater. Genova could be using Sephiroth to call a meteor in that she could ride off on since that is the method of transportation that she used to get to Gaia in the first place. Even Cloud had Genova cells implanted in him after Nibelheim burned down and every time he came close to Genova, he had a mental breakdown. Cloud was even controlled into handing the black material over at the Temple of the Ancients. 
How? Genova cells, and Genova was right there disguised as Sephiroth. The weapons were originally created during the crisis of Genova, and they were summoned a second time when Genova's plan was set into action. I mean, she broke out of Shinra HQ all on her own. It's hard to believe that Sephiroth could control this super power powerful alien all while being at the northern crater. Now that I have laid out good groundwork for an argument for Genova, let's look into the character of Sephiroth himself. He started out, I guess you could say, a good guy. He worked for the Shinra like a lot of young men his age and was incredibly successful. He was the hero of the Wutai War. He was lied to from birth saying that Genova was his mother and that he was technically a bastard or fatherless child. It's a rather tragic story. Then Sephiroth finds his mother in a vault in a Shinra reactor and he goes crazy. I have heard many peop people argue Arden from Final Fantasy XV is too tragic to be considered a true villain. Couldn't the same argument be made about Sephiroth then? Now, after going crazy at the Shinra reactor, Sephiroth seals himself in the Shinra mansion basement library for three days, maybe longer. He finds records there that unhinges him even further. Once he's finished reading in the library, he burns down Nibelheim and heads to the reactor to retrieve Genova. He takes Genova's head from the reactor, where he is stopped by Cloud and thrown into the live stream. He travels through the live stream to the northern crater, where he spends out the rest of his life technically. Now here we are going into mostly speculations about Sephiroth. There are though bits of information that concurs with the speculations. Sephiroth is at the northern crater with Genova's head. Genova, disguised as Sephiroth at the Temple of the Ancients on Disc 1 in the game, states that Sephiroth has traveled the livestream and has gained the knowledge of the Ancients. Since gaining this new knowledge, he is able to control others who have Genova cells in them. I guess with the combined knowledge of the Ancients and Genova's head has led to him being able to do this. That at least is what is speculated. I personally disagree. Sephiroth, overpowering an extraterrestrial who is so powerful that she was able to kill most of the Cetra, and the planet felt so threatened that it created biomechanical weapons to kill her? Eh, that's hard to swallow. I personally think Genova is in control using Sephiroth as a form of bait to manipulate others to her benefit. I have trouble seeing Sephiroth as a villain by his own merits because he was lied to by the Shinra, injected with Genova cells, and potentially pushed by her to summon Meteor in the first place. In the remake, I really hope things like this will be made clear. To me, Genova is the true villain of Final Fantasy VII. She is just the center of constant tragedy and almost all tragedies in Final Fantasy VII. The Great Calamity from the Skies, Heaven's Dark Harbinger. But we cannot forget about the third option for top villain, Shinra. Shinra, Shinra, Shinra. A person could literally almost write an entire book on the evil things that Shinra have done. I'm going to go through some big ones real quick. The Coral Slaughter, the Nibelheim cover-up, dropping the plate in Sector 7, the war with Wutai, Mako reactors destroying the planet, the pollution to Junin, and on and on the list goes. What is so special about Shinra is that it's not just a single person or entity. Multiple evil people are involved with Shinra, and the evilest possibly being Hojo. This man redefines the meaning of evil. He holds no compassion for others. All life is a disposable tool to him for the goal of higher knowledge. He used his lover and even his own child for the sake of an experiment. Then, the president of Shinra is giving the okay for all these evil actions. President Shinra ends up getting killed by Genova Sephiroth. His son, the vice president Rufus, doesn't even bat an eye when his father dies and takes control of the company with the intent of leading with fear. Next steps in the beautiful Scarlet. This head of weapon development will send your head spinning if you cross her. She was the head of the Coral Massacre and is really as ruthless as any other villain in Final Fantasy VII. Next is Heidegger, Heidegger, I don't know, Heidegger, I don't know how to pronounce his name. This constantly laughing buffoon is never above abusing those lower than him. Watch out especially when he's angry. He even throws his own henchmen away. Finally, the Turks. 
The Turks, they kind of remind me of the CIA with their covert operations and spying. I just have a hard time labeling them as completely evil because they do tend to have some compassion and decency to them, but they do do some pretty heinous things. Um, Reno dropping Sector 7 plate. But as a whole, they are very dark and an underhanded organization of people. I feel like Shinra were also the main targets of the weapons. You could have argued that the main targets were Junin and Megar, you know, their massive reactors, but I think the weapons were mainly focused on who were controlling the reactors. Shinra. Shinra is also the group that unearthed Genova. I don't believe that they knew what they had exactly found, but nevertheless, they are the ones who found her. Shinra are the ones who created Sephiroth and are really the main reason as for why the horrible events in Final Fantasy VII happened. I'm personally on Team Genova for true villain in Final Fantasy VII, but guys, please tell me your thoughts in the comment section below on who you think is a true villain, and that just about wraps up this project. If you guys liked the video, please make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. Pretty please go down and hit that subscribe button, it really helps me out. Ring-a-ding that notification bell to stay notified on future videos, and until the next project guys, take it easy. I'm out!